I'm here to talk to you about why I believe that we as adults should be more like children. Now, before I start, I just want to make it clear that I don't believe that children are perfect. In fact, I know they're not. But I do know them to have several characteristics that we tend to lose as we grow up. And I, for one, don't think we should. So I've chosen three things, three things I'm going to share with you today, three areas in which I believe it would benefit you to be more like a child. Starting with the world, or more specifically, how children see the world. Because children see the world as a giant playground in which every corner has a whole new something to explore and, and discover. Now, to be fair, as adults, we've been there. We've done that. We bought that t-shirt and we danced that dance. So, <laughs> It's not that surprising that we're not as excited about the world around us. But I think that sometimes we forget. We forget how amazing the world around us actually is. We forget to be, no, we forget to be fascinated. Children, they allow themselves to be fascinated, whether it's by big things or by small things, whether it's a puddle or a rainbow or the stars or a soap bubble. I mean, when was the last time you allowed yourself to realize how freaking cool a soap bubble is? Seriously, all you do is mix water and soap, and you have this thing that just it floats around, and it reflects light in, in these amazing ways and colors. And, and it's so fragile that you don't even dare to, to breathe too deeply because you might just... We need to believe in how amazing the world around us is because it is amazing. And we need to allow ourselves to be fascinated. Children allow themselves to be fascinated. We should too. Because if we allow little things to make us happy, the way little things make little people happy, then we'll find ourselves a little happier every day. I um, was in India a couple years ago with two of my cousins, Julia and Joel. Now, Julia, she's raised here in Norway and speaks Norwegian. And Joel, he was raised in India and speaks Malayalam, which is one of the official languages of India. Neither of them spoke the other's language. But it was really fun watching them interact. Because at first, they were clinging on to their mother's skirts, and they were terrified to let go. But then they started to play, not together, just close to each other. And then they moved closer and closer. And before you knew it, their two separate games had become one and the same. I remember at one point where Joel, he puts out his hand, and in Malayalam he says, Inna. And Yulia, she gracefully accepts, and in Norwegian she says, Tak. And just like that, they were friends. There's an indescribable innocence involved when children make friends. They dive into it. And they're wholeheartedly open to getting to know this stranger, soon to be friend. But with adults, the line that divides strangers and friends, it's, it's somewhat thicker. We'll, we'll put out our hand and we'll shake hands with the person. Uh, and if we're not too busy saying our own name, we'll maybe catch their name. Perhaps even add them on Facebook. But we don't really invest any time in them. Especially not if we know we're never going to meet them again. And we don't really care. But, and I think, I think this is because 
we put a lot of value into the word friend. And with good reason. A friend is rare and valuable. A good one is even more so. But does it always have to be that serious? Can't it just sometimes be about having a great conversation with a complete stranger that you may or may not meet again? But just for there and then, you put out your hand and you say, here's my time of day. And they gracefully accept and say thank you. Believe in the people around you and believe in friends, whether they last for a minute or a day or years. Believe like a child. Magnificent me. I'm willing to bet that everybody in this room, at one point or the other, imagined themselves saving the day, or the world, or the princess, or perhaps the prince. No matter what you were saving, the common element is that you imagined yourself as being the best. And what's more, you truly believed that you could be because you, you knew that you were magnificent. I uh, told my eight-year-old cousin that she was beautiful. And she blushed and smiled and said, thank you. And I saw that she meant it. I told my 22-year-old friend that she was beautiful, and she laughed at me. And she said, no, I'm not. And I saw that she meant it. It's strange, isn't it, that we go from believing that we are magnificent to believing that we're too tall, too skinny, too fat, too stupid, too... <laughs> Take your pick. Just not good enough, not magnificent. Children dream of what they can be based on who they are. And because they believe themselves to be magnificent, they dream of saving the world. But if we don't believe that we're magnificent, what does that say about our dreams? We need to start believing that we're magnificent again, and we need to start dreaming again. Because unless we believe that we might, we definitely won't. Believe in yourself. Believe that you are magnificent. Because you are. Now, I'm not saying that we should be more childish. I'm saying that we should be more childlike. Children have an immense faith in the world around them, in the people around them, and in themselves. And these are things that we as adults can definitely learn from. Believe like a child. Have faith. Remember, there's no shame in seeing wonderful things as being wonderful. Thank you.